In this presentation, I will be discussing IPL systems and the choice of filters. IPL systems can output a wide range of wavelengths, typically from around 430 up to 1200 nanometers, which is in the near infrared part of the spectrum. This means it contains both visible and invisible infrared light. The fluence range can be up to over 100 joules per square centimetre, while the pulse duration range can uh, go over 100 milliseconds. This is uh, m mostly due to the fact that uh, most IPL systems generate uh, a train of sub-pulses and adds them all together into one single pulse. This makes IPL systems very flexible since you have uh, a, quite a choice over wavelength, fluence and pulse duration, which means it can also treat um, a, a number of conditions in the skin, but it also makes it trickier to master since you have much more choice compared to typical laser systems. So let's look at the absorption characteristics for various chromophores in the skin. Here we can see the absorption curves for water, melanin, deoxyhemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin. And what this tells us is how well these chromophores absorb across the different colours of light and different wavelengths. So melanin absorbs pretty strongly down at the blue end of the spectrum, but it, uh, it decreases as the wavelength increases up to around about 1000 nanometers, um, where it absorbs uh, much less strongly than at the blue end of the spectrum. Uh, blood absorbs uh, very strongly here, between about 500 and 600. Uh, nanometers, you can see that uh, the absorption here is greater than absorption by melanin. So this means we can specifically target the uh, blood vessels, the hemoglobin in the blood vessels, um, and we'll get preferential absorption in the blood compared with melanin. Now we don't use these peaks here because historically it was decided that uh, this might cause too much uh, absorption in melanin and uh, the, the, the researchers back in the day decided that that was maybe not a good thing. So we stuck with the, the second lot of peaks here, the lower peaks. So to target the haemoglobin, we typically will use a filter like this, about a 530 nanometer filter. And this lets through the yellow light, which is strongly absorbed, or preferentially absorbed rather, by the haemoglobin over melanin. If you want to treat uh, hair, then you will target the, the melanin, typically at this part of the spectrum, everything above around 600 nanometers. Um, and this will, as you can see here, this will preferentially uh, be absorbed in the melanin, but not so much in the haemoglobin or deoxyhemoglobin. So there's less chance of damaging blood vessels um, with this wavelength range. Best absorption for um, hair removal is to target the, the melanin uh, between 600 and 1200. But if you want to treat uh, hair in darker colored skins, well, the dark skin's gonna have more melanin in the epidermis and the basal layer. So I would suggest a higher filter, around about 700 or thereabouts nanometers. And uh, this will mean you'll have less absorption in the epidermis and therefore less potential damage. It also means you have less absorption in the hair, but um, you, you should still get sufficient absorption without damaging the epidermis. And then if you want to treat uh, uh, benign pigmentation and uh, you're trying to target the melanin in this case, then you could use a lower filter like, uh, like here where you're uh, somewhere between 430 and 530 and down that end of the spectrum you will get uh, preferential absorption of melanin. It does conflict a little bit with uh, blood um, but you will get uh, a fairly strong absorption. I should point out that the absorption scale on the, the y-axis there is a, a logarithmic scale. So this is not linear, this is a, this is a log which makes a, a big, big difference. So what happens if we put a, a 430 nanometer filter into our IPL systems? Well, these filters are designed to stop all wavelengths below 430 nanometers. Um, which in most IPL systems is, is usually not an awful lot of energy, but, it, but it'll stop all the uh, ultraviolet and, and the, the strong blue light. But it will allow through everything above 430. So that includes the, the green, the yellow, orange, red, and infrared light. So in essence, you could use a 430 to target uh, hair, 
benign pigmentation and blood vessels. Uh, if you were to treat somebody who had, um, let's say they had some dark hair in a pigmented patch with some enlarged blood vessels, then this filter would be able to treat all three conditions at the same time. The problem we may have is that because water starts to absorb light energy at above uh, 750, 800 nanometers, uh, it will begin to heat up for all wavelengths above that, uh, that cutoff. So for IPL systems, there's about 400 to 450 nanometers worth of energy there, uh, which will heat up the tissue water. And it's this heating of the water that leads to thermal pain in the dermis. So you must make sure that you are using sufficient uh, skin surface cooling to, to mitigate against this. So in summary, most filters that we use in IPL systems are cut-off filters. They're designed to cut off all the wavelengths below the value of the filter. And all the wavelengths above that value will get through the filter and therefore onto the skin surface. So suggested filters for treatments. If you have a filter around about 600 nanometers, then that will let through all the light between 600 and 1200 nanometers. And this is good to target melanin in hair. I suggest you use this for lighter colored skin because the skin, uh, skin surface, epidermal, basal layer, etc., should not be too badly damaged by this. If, however, you've got darker skin, then I suggest using a higher filter around 700 or, or 750 or whatever you've got, um, because this will then mean that less energy will be absorbed in the basal layer melanin, leading to less damage in that, uh, in that area. It does also mean though that you'll, you'll have less energy available for the melanin in the target hair too though. Use a 530 filter, which allows through everything between 530 and 1200 nanometers to target the hemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin in the blood. So this is a good filter for uh, thread veins and spider nevi, etc. And you might want to use the 430 filter, uh, which lets through everything between 430 and 1200 to target melanin specifically, because you'll get a, a strong absorption by the melanin down at the, the low end there. So that's good for benign pigmentation. 430 is also a good filter to use for acne, because the, the blue light down that end of the spectrum will be strongly absorbed in the, uh, the piacnus bacteria. Um, this generates some um, singlet oxygen, which is toxic to the bacteria and can kill it. Um, you would then follow that up with um, a later stage with a, a 530 filter to target the blood vessels in the uh, inflammation around the acne. I hope you found this useful. I hope it's cleared up some of the uh, mysteries of the, the filters and why you should choose which filter for which particular treatment. Um, I've seen a, a few cases where people have been advised, for example, to use a, a 590 filter to treat blood vessels. Um, not quite sure where this came from. It's complete baloney. 590 will not let through enough yellow light to damage blood vessels. You definitely want to use a 530 or, or similar sort of filter. Don't get too hung up on the numbers. Um, the, 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 these numbers are, are becoming more and more let's say, uh, generally accepted, but um, it doesn't matter if they vary by a few nanometers here or there. Hope you found this useful. Uh, you can find more stuff on our blog. Thanks then. Bye.